Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah? Cool. All right. Uh, so to kick this off, we have a grand prize. Somebody has left their cell phone up here. Is this, does this belong to anybody? Nobody? Okay. Well, if you want a cell phone... Why? Oh, that's yours? That's <laughs> what <laughs> William, I found your cell phone. Hold on. <laughs> did everybody have a good lunch? Yeah, did you go to Bucky's? No, you go to Chick fil A? Yeah, nobody went to Chick fil A because it's closed. They went to Roadkill Special. Roadkill Special, great. So I'm here. I want to talk to you all about aerodynamics and friction. So rolling resistance. Guys, what is rolling resistance? <laughs> this is interactive. Yeah. If I wanted to tell myself about rolling resistance, I'd just... Yeah, there we go. You in the yellow. Keep it rolling. Yeah. Any component, anything, any aspect of the car that keeps you from rolling? Any aspect of the road that keeps you from rolling. Yeah. What are we going to do about rolling resistance? Are we just going to like acknowledge that it exists and like turn our back on it and be like, Oh yeah, there's a little bit of resistance. Are we gonna do something? What do we do about it? What do we do about rolling resistance? Yeah, maybe we wanna lubricate something. Yeah, use some oil. What would we lubricate? Bearings. Bearings, yeah. Yeah, you go to your trailer, like if your trailer's been sitting out like for all year and you haven't used it, you you like you repack the bearings, right? You you squirt some oil in there, you make sure the bearings roll around. Right? You can do the same thing with your solar car, right? Well, you've got wheels on your solar car, you've got bearings in there, right? Put some maybe WD-40 or fancier stuff, right? You want higher quality uh, ball bearings. What else can you do about rolling resistance? Tire pressure. There you go, tire pressure. You want lots of tire pressure, right? Right? No? You want to adjust it so it's appropriate, right? And, and, and fat tires. What do we know about fat tires, thin tires? Fat tires roll better. Why would that be? More surface area. You have more surface area. And, and they, they flex as you run over a, a, a bump, right? A lot of the tires that you see out there are, are nice and thin. Well, that's because the bicycles are, are thin, right? It comes from bicycles. And you want a thin tire to slide in between your legs. Well. You know, we don't put tires in between our legs, we put them on the bottom of cars, right? So we're not limited by, by our stride, right? So we can go in and get fatter tires that have uh, better rolling resistance. What else, what else do we want to consider when we think about rolling resistance? Tracking. Tracking. What's tracking? Yeah, you're not, make sure you're not, you're not going like this. You want to have your wheels like pointed in the direction that you expect your solar car to go in. Is everyone here from Texas? Did y'all, did y'all, were, were y'all hit by ice a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I was driving on I-20 in the ice and I decided I wanted to turn and my car kept going straight because I had, I had no traction, right? Well, okay, so that's bad, right? When I hit the asphalt, you know, I gotta readjust uh, my, my wheels so I'm actually traveling in the right direction, right? Well, I burned a little bit of rubber when doing that. You don't want your solar car to do that either. All right, so highlights about rolling resistance. Be aware that it's a thing that you need to actually take care of. Check out your tires, check out your wheels, check out your, your pressure. Uh, lubricate stuff, right? L lubricate stuff that moves, that's supposed to move. All right, we also want to talk about aerodynamic drag. So we learned, we learned yesterday that, uh, that wind resistance increases linearly for slow moving cars and exponentially for fast moving cars. What are some different ways that we can enhance our car to reduce aerodynamic drag? Yes? What was that? Change shape. Change the shape, right? So what, like circles are more aerodynamic than triangles? Or you want like a three-dimensional parallelopat? No, what do you want? What, what type of shapes are most aerodynamic? Narrow at the top, widening out in the back. Yeah, we see a little bit of that up here, right? Where it's narrow at the front, right? And it, we a little bit of a tapered back here. I saw a hand back there. A uh, teardrop. A teardrop. So you want to decrease your frontal area as much as possible. 
Do you want the, so with a teardrop, you got a big old bubble on one side and you got a little tapered end on the other side. Which, which side goes forward in the teardrop? The bubble goes to the front. The bubble goes to the front, right. What else can we do with, uh, with the, uh, aerodynamic drag? There you go. All right, let's look at another picture. We're going to go back in time. Look at these two cars here. Which one of these is more aerodynamic? The bottom one, right here. This one's a little bit more aerodynamic than that one, right? What are some major differences between the two cars? Curves. Curves, yeah. Curves are nice. You got this nice little curve up front, and curve down back. Over here, not so much curves. You got a lot of straight lines, right? What else? You got covered wheel, yeah. Uh, these uh, wheel fairings, right? Why, why are why are wheel fairings important in aerodynamics? Because when the air is spinning, it causes a lot of air disturbance. Because when the air is spinning, it causes a lot of air disturbance. Is that the word? You, yeah, air disturbance, especially on the top edge of the wheel, right? Because the top edge of the wheel is going faster than your average speed of the car, right? Because it's it's going forward, right? Lots of air resistance right there. What else? What other differences do you see between the two cars? Enclosed, uh, cockpit. An enclosed cockpit, right? So right here we've got a nice smooth surface for the air to flow over. Over here we get this flat surface, and then bam, you got that flat, that big flat windshield that just sticks up and shakes back and forth when the sun, when the wind hits it, right? These, uh, side note, the, these right here are uh, rear view mirrors, and they are totally useless at speed. I know so, because that's my car. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What other differences are we seeing? So we covered, we covered this, uh, it, it, it's beneficial to have a little bit of a slant right here, but we want, we want more of a slant. That'd be nicer. It'd be nice if we had wheel fairings to cover this up. It'd be nice if we had more of a bubble or aerodynamic shape, right? But we also have this roll bar and then this, this pretty looking human right back here uh, with, uh, with absolutely nothing protecting him, right? Wind whips around the windshield and smacks him in the face and then rubs against all that roll bar in the face and, and, and the, the part of the cockpit. That slows you down too, right? And then we've got, we've got a covered body that covers most of the, 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 the garbage inside the vehicle, right? That's beneficial, but it, it would be nicer if, if it wrapped around the wheels, included some of the wheels, We've got, it's not technically a wheel fairing right back here on the back wheel, but there's a little bit of coverage. What you can't see from this picture, if you look on the back end, is the back end is almost completely wide open. It doesn't, it looks like it's got a tapered back end because of, because of this nice facade right here. But if you, if you turn around on the back side, you can see quite clearly that there's not a lot of coverage and, and you're losing some aerodynamic drag right there. Mr. Lee Cave. Do you have any, uh, any uh, additions to add to this gorgeously gold vehicle right here that I'm sure you had, you had nothing to do with that design? It is a beautiful car. It is. It is. There's That's a knife edge on the rear, which uh, uh, right breaks, breaks nicely with the uh, airflow and tries to put it back together again for less disturbance. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what else? Well, let's... Are your cells laminated on the first car versus the... So that's not relevant to this discussion, but they are in fact there. There are modules about yay big. But are they? There's something over them. You know. The, yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, on each individual panel there is. Yeah. They're, they're encapsulated. The, these, they're, they're those, both cells are, are SunCat Solar encapsulated. You know, there's a laminate on top. They just mounted it on a on a board so that it's modular. You can swap them in and out. All right, let's look at some slides. Do you have Chris's password? Okay, so we're not going to watch a video. Yeah. Speak me, watch me.
All right, so these are uh, some walkthroughs on how to encapsulate, no, I'm sorry, not encapsulate your, 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 your car, but to, to put a covering around your car. Uh, this is the St. Thomas team, and they have a unique opportunity. They have a uh, plastic wrap that you wrap around your oversized yacht when it gets cold outside. Texans, we don't have a lot of access to water or to cold, uh, so I'm not sure if you can get this you know, without importing it from Minnesota, but uh, you can see here the students cutting out the general shape that they're going to wrap around their car. And then here they tape it to a frame of their vehicle. And then they flip it upside down and they, they heat it with a heat gun, which looks a lot like that. And the heat gun makes everything tight and kind of, kind of distorts and, and takes away any, any distortions and, and the ugliness. So, I mean, that's just an easy way to do a body that's, you know, aerodynamic, but not that much effort uh, compared to having to put like a mold and, and, and together, even though that can be done and we can show that now. Do we have a video? Yes. All right, so we're going to show a video of somebody making a mold. <laughs> it's plugged in. So this is a mold taken from the MIT uh, mold, and they're just putting the, the actual body together here. It'll speed up, don't worry. You know you got what you wanted when you gave me the news. You told me you were leaving, you gave me the blues. Well, that's okay, be on your way, cause I'm sick of all your scheming, man. So Lee, how long did it take for your team to do all those steps that were there? That, that was the top. The top took overnight. So, um, uh, of course, there was preparation the day before and you know, organization getting everybody there. And then you had to do the same thing to the bottom. And then, uh, and then trim it and, and uh, smooth it up and everything. And um, it, it would probably take a week of intense work to get that, to get the shell 
not the frame or anything, just the top shell and the bottom shell of this clam shell. Uh, but it's very aerodynamic, slip looking. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for the commentary. That concludes the discussion on aerodynamics and rolling resistance.